again here for the November 16th Ken Deep on the Delta Fishing Report. And we're just kind of rolling along, right? In, you know, from fall into winter, everything is still happening out here. It's starting to taper off a little bit. Uh, the stripers have been uh, kind of on a little hiatus. They're still here, people are catching them, but uh, we're waiting for a little water to come down, maybe push those stripers in. The largemouth bass are on a, they're not on a torrid bite, but the fishing has been, I'll say, good on most days. Uh, it's been a little bit of a grind, but as long as you're out here putting your time in, you're going to catch fish. For those of you who keep up with Christian Ostrander, you know he's back from uh, Table Rock Lake where he got a seventh place finish in the uh, uh, Toyota MLF series. Uh, I got out with Christian earlier in the week and uh, we did a little interview. So next Tuesday, I'll put that interview up and Christian talks all about his total experience uh, traveling a couple thousand miles across the country, having a, um, an unbelievable uh, six days of fishing at Table Rock and coming out in the top 10. So Christian will talk all about that and that'll be next Tuesday. I'm also gonna have Christian on a little later in the program. He could talk about what uh, happened during the tournaments here on the Delta and what he's been doing on the Delta guiding. He'll give you a little bit of an idea of what you can expect in the next week or two. So with that, as far as conditions out here, a lot of, um, a lot of hyacinths still breaking up. Uh, the weather has been really nice, very low pressure out here. It's been great to be out here. You see a few boats running around, but uh, by and large, you know, unless you're fishing on the weekends, uh, you have the whole river to yourself. I got a, uh, a report from John, who Johnny, who was the first time uh, reporter. He was out around Bullfrog, and one thing that uh, I was surprised at, he said he was getting one foot of visibility uh, out on the Delta. He, he'd moved around a little bit. One foot of uh, visibility of Bullfrog, about five feet of visibility out when he got in the Central Delta. Uh, talked to a couple of guys that were fishing down south, and they're talking, you know, one to two feet of vis still down there. It's just not going to clear up this year. Hopefully we'll get a, a, another flush of rain and it'll clear up for next year. But man, that South Delta ha has just been, you know, one or zero to two feet of visibility all, all uh, uh, summer. And it looks like it's going to stay that way. So we'll, we'll see what happens through the winter months. But uh, all in all, we're talking about about five feet of visibility here on the Central Delta. I was out around Liberty uh, Monday and that's looking about five feet of visibility out there. Everything's looking good, and like I said, we're rolling along, the fish are biting. Uh, it's not uh, an all-out bite, but uh, we'll get into that largemouth bite here in a few minutes. Let's talk about uh, stripers. And they here in the Central Delta, and even out around Liberty, around uh, Sacramento, uh, Three Mile Slough, Brandon Island, it's been pretty much a grind for stripers the last couple weeks. I talked to Jeff Suhu, He's doing really well, but he's running all the way out to Sassoon Bay. He's getting a lot of fish out there and he's getting a good quality of fish. Talk to Jeff a little bit about what he thinks is going to happen. And he says as that water temperature drops, all those, well, not all of them, but a lot of those fish that um, are out in Sassoon Bay, out in the bay, they're going to start flooding into the system and we will see a flush of fish coming in here. Uh, when they come in, I talked to Jeff about what he's going to be doing. You know, for his clients, he drifts um, live bait most of the time. He does a lot of spooning. Um, he does whatever it is to, that he has to do to catch the fish. But I asked him his number one suggestion, you know, when we see that next flight of fish come in, uh, what he would be using and how to set it up. And basically, he's throwing a five inch paddle tail swim bait in, um, that's a plastic five inch paddle tail swim bait in uh, white color. Uh, maybe pearl. He's using a quarter ounce head about 90% of the time. He likes to throw that on around 17 pound test mono line and he uses a a, um, a very limber rod. The rod that he uses is actually a glass rod. He doesn't, you know, a lot of us bass guys I think go out there with a rod that's a little bit too stiff. But that's uh, Jeff's suggestion and he fishes that slow he'll throw it out over the you know in between uh, sparse tules he'll throw it out over um, uh, flats and he'll just reel it fast enough to keep the paddle tail moving and, and just kind of pop it right through the weeds just like you're fishing for largemouth bass so that's uh, Jeff's suggestion uh, as those fish come in 
I know it's expensive to hire a guide, but sometimes hiring a guy like Jeff, or, or maybe you know you're hiring a bass fishing guide if you're fishing for for largemouth. Um, it's an expensive day, but it can really pay off when you look down the road a couple of years with the knowledge that you learn. Some of the things that um, you're out, you should uh, get some knowledge to help you catch fish, but a lot of times you'll get a lot of knowledge on how to save time, effort, and you know, in the long run, that equates to money. Uh, burning gas, uh, you know, in your boat. Uh, how to look for fish, things like that. So, um, if you're looking for a striper guide, check out Jeff Suhu at uh, Suhu Sport Fishing. Okay, what are we gonna do here? Let's get right into the largemouth bass, and I'm gonna turn it over to Christian. Uh, Christian has a little bit to say about the uh, uh, about the uh, uh, weekend tournaments, and uh, he'll give you a little bit of uh, what he thinks going on. Then I'll come on and wrap up uh, the, uh, the bass part with what I've been doing, and maybe give you a few suggestions for next week. So let's get into uh, Christian's uh, interview. Christian, why don't you start off with a couple of the tournaments that you're familiar with. You got some friends that won a couple of them and uh, then let us know what you've been doing out on the Delta, what we can do to come out and catch a few extra fish on the Delta. Uh, yeah, you know what? There was two tournaments this weekend. I didn't fish any of them, but uh, uh, um, NorCal Bass TOC was out here. It took uh, my buddy Juan won it. He had 20 pounds the first day, uh, 19 pounds the second day. He's an extremely good fisherman out here on the Delta. Juan Acosta, everyone knows who that is. Uh, you know what, he just basically told me he ran around, uh, you know, chucking chatterbait. He said he caught two big ones on a chatterbait both days. He had a seven something. He had a seven he? something the first day, and then he had a, like another one almost close to seven the second day. Both chatterbaits. So, uh, you know what, but he said he caught fish doing all kinds of things. You know, he's a big topwater guy. He said he was throwing a frog, a frog. he was throwing a spook, uh, running around, he's throwing a plopper, and he said he just ran around. Uh, so you know what? That's huge weights. I think second place was only like 34, uh, 32 pounds for two days. So you know the weights were low, and uh, you know what? My uh, also my good buddy Jim won the hook yesterday uh, with like 18 pounds. The weights ain't huge out here. That's a uh, typical fall delta fishing, but you know some nice fish are being caught. Uh, a lot of fish are being caught. Um, so that's great, but weights are still low. You know, Juan kind of, you know, always catches them out here. He's a good fall fisherman. He loves it out here in the fall. So that's that. Um, you know what I had? Uh, I fished both days this weekend. Um, Saturday, we did great. We got in the stripers first thing. No big ones, you know, 20, 22 inches. A lot of fun, uh, you know, probably a dozen keeper stripers. They were going mad. Uh, we rolled up on that same stuff Sunday and uh, nothing, no stripers there. Um, Saturday we caught some nice fish uh, punching around. Uh, we had like a five and a four and uh, gotten a little chatterbait gig and a spook gig. Um, running around, grass flats, uh, lots of bait. If you guys, this is the time of year you look for the cranes, man. If there's a line of cranes down the bank, probably go fish that bank. Regardless, stripers, bass, um, these fish are running around with the bait fish right now. Uh, color wise, do whatever you want. You know, uh, a bass is an opportunity. So you're going to throw a, a craw pattern color through a, you know, where they're chasing shad. It's probably going to eat that craw color. It's not a big deal. You got to fish around where the bait is right now. Uh, fish got to start, you know, running in the marina soon. They're definitely running the back of these dead ends. Uh, you know, them bass will hang around those areas where you see a lot of them salmon too. Uh, a lot of these dead ends I'm getting into. Uh, we're seeing a ton of salmon. I ain't catching no salmon. Old Stevie here is, but uh, I'm not. So uh, they're running them backs. So this is the Can't time of year they, back. yeah, they're running <laughs> the backs, they're running the marinas, they're running the grass flats, they're running the main channel. Look for the cranes and just go fishing. You know, uh, I'm gonna give it a couple more weeks and this place is gonna start to get kind of dead with the cold like it always does. You know, December ain't gonna be killer. So uh, a couple more weeks. I'm thinking this next uh, couple weeks though, it's gonna start firing. You can catch a lot of fish. I'll tell you what, Juan said he told me, no lie, Juan said, no lie, he said he caught 70 bass on Saturday. You, know, you hear Juan catching, uh, you know, almost 40 pounds in two days. Yeah. Everybody didn't do that. A lot of guys were pulling seven and eight pounds. So the field did not do extremely well. It was pretty tough fishing, but there are opportunities out there and i think yeah. that's what's what christian's talking about you know one day could be your day and the next day you know it's going to be someone else's day so christian thanks for uh, absolutely for giving us that information and uh, let's go out and try to catch some fish yeah okay so that you got christian's two cents i'll let you know what i've been doing and uh i have been uh 
fishing quite a bit. Uh, Monday, uh, Christian and I were out at uh, uh, Liberty. We wanted to go out for striper, and we hit one of those days that was just flat calm, no wind, uh, very little current. Didn't really pan out for stripers. We got out there, Christian picked up uh, uh, about a four pound fish right off the bat, had another big blow up on a top water, and it was just kind of dead, and we decided it just wasn't setting up right. Uh, we saw uh, probably six or eight other boats that were moving around, talked to a few guys, nobody really picking up anything. So I don't think there's a lot of fish in there. We didn't see a lot of bait, didn't see a lot of bird action, and um, just decided that, you know, we need a day like today where there's a little overcast, maybe a little breeze. I think there's fish out there to be caught but they're not in great numbers right now so Christian and I ended up fishing for uh, largemouth and it was um, I wouldn't say it was a grind the time that we put in on on largemouth up there uh, we were doing well on top waters I was throwing a rover or a spook uh, that was bringing in the nicer fish uh, caught a couple fish on um, uh, spinner baits and I'm sure if we wanted to throw jigs and worms and things like that we would have caught fish just one of those days where we kind of went out and enjoyed enjoyed the weather we talked a lot had a good had a good time out there and um, I have to admit and, and I think if you talk to Christian neither one of us fished very hard but we did catch fish and we had a good day out there so that was out uh, Monday uh, at um, Liberty, I was out uh, Tuesday, today is Wednesday, and man, I wish yesterday was like today. We've got a nice overcast day, and I think this would be great for topwater fishing. I, uh, I had a very steady day, like everyone else, and, and we'll talk about some of the reports that came in, and I think this is what you can expect if you come out to the Delta. If you stick with uh, jerk baits, uh, drop shots, uh, I've been throwing a fluke a lot, and I've been throwing that rover, which is basically a spook for topwater fishing. You can expect to get uh, quite a few uh, rats, and I'm not talking about baby rats, I'm talking about rats that are about 10 to 12 inches. You're going to get a lot of fish between 12 and 15 inches, that kind of two pound, you know, give, it to, give or take a little bit in that two pound class. And fishing the baits that I just mentioned, um, you're going to run into a three pound, uh, maybe a couple of three pound fish along the way, but you got to get really lucky to get one of those bigger fish. Uh, so you're talking 10 or 12 pound uh, limit. If you get lucky for the bigger fish, usually for me, they have been on the top water, um, the spooks and, and the rovers. And most of my bigger fish have been in that, I'll say three and a half to four pound class. Now what separates the guys that are winning the tournaments, they're getting that you know, 12 pound bag in and they're able to put a couple of big fish, whether it's punching, uh, throwing a spook, whatever it is, a couple of five, six pound fish, and that puts them in that 20 pound um, uh, class. So. You know, what the, the difference between the guys in the middle of the pack and the guys that are winning the tournaments this time of year, it's one or two fish generally. Nobody's out there getting, you know, a stringer of four and five pound fish. And I've talked to a lot of people on the dock and they're saying the exact same thing. You've got to go out there, you've got to put your time in, you've got to grind a little bit. Uh, worms are doing well, wacky rig worms, um, drop shot. I've been throwing uh, mostly, um, uh, flukes and I've been having a lot of fun because I've been throwing them on a, a spinning rod with about eight pound test you can duplicate that with a jerk bait uh, jerk baits are working a lot of guys are starting to throw a rigs and you know when you throw it an a rig you got a lot better chance of maybe picking up some striper there are a lot of small stripers in the central Delta a lot of the guys that are catching fish are you know the keepers are just you know that 18 to 22 inch size range uh, a lot of shorts and, and they're not dinks they're 15 16 inch fish fun to catch on bass gear but they're not really anything that you would go out there and target for for a striper fisherman so with that being said what we're looking for in this next week and man if we have days like this that are overcast we're still going to get a, a topwater bite now no wind today overcast day with about maybe five um uh, five knot winds where you just got a little bit of surface disturbance man make sure you have a top water on and I've been throwing the rover throw a spook throw a popper you're going to get some top water action those are going to be the bigger fish chatter baits and spinner baits are still working 
uh, jerk baits are working and worms are starting to come into play. Uh, some guys are punching, but most of the guys are, I think are kind of leaning towards moving a little faster and, and, and covering water. The fish aren't really piled up. We have some small fronts coming in. They are uh, predicting a little bit of rain on a couple of days. So I'm thinking if we have a day like today and now as I'm talking, I feel that breeze coming up behind me. I wish I could get out today because this is the day that I would want to be out there, especially if we get a little breeze. But as these fronts come in, it's going to compress the bite windows. So if you're coming out here and you're staying all day, that's a good thing because you're probably, these, these small fronts come and go, you're probably going to hit a couple of these bite windows and that's going to make your day. Now they may only be 20 minutes, a half an hour, or you get five or six fish and you get a, you know two or three of those nice fish during that one compressed window and, and you do that a couple times a day. By the time you get home, you got a pretty good bag of fish and you've had some fun. Keep that in mind. Uh, keep a good eye on your salooner tables. Make sure you're out, out there at the times where there's a lot of salooner activity. That still seems to be holding true uh, as far as uh, when the fish are active. And just get out there and have some fun. Hopefully we'll have a couple more weeks of what we're having now. If you really want to catch fish, you want to get a big bag, maybe Clear Lake's a better opportunity. The Motherlode Lakes, I haven't really been getting any great reports from Comanche or uh, Maloney's anywhere around there. You're probably better off staying on the Delta right now. As the Delta gets into their funk, then I think a lot of us are going to start looking uh, elsewhere, either Maloney's or, or maybe up to Clear Lake. Thank you guys so much for uh, watching and remember next week that uh, Tuesday I'll have that uh, interview up with Christian and until then, hopefully I'll see you guys on the water. If you see me out here, stop and give me a report and God darn it, I kind of wish I was fishing today. I'm going to try to get out tomorrow. So, hey, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys on the river. Good luck.